we will uh, we will accelerate a little bit to make sure that we can fit it in into your time frame. But again, thank you for joining the session today. We're going to be focused on IT efficient efficiency, and really helping you guys to be able to solve issues quicker uh, and just be more efficient at what we're doing because we know that that there's a you know there's a, a hefty workload. We're we're resourced constrained, um, <clears throat> and we just want to make sure that. That we're able to to handle tickets and, and handle troubleshooting issues uh, as quickly as possible and and when possible be able to actually anticipate them get ahead of them so uh, my name is Kiri Pence uh, I'm from Goliath I, I joined Goliath back in November prior to that I spent the last eight years at Citrix so I'm happy to be joining uh, a home crowd today uh, and my guest today is George Spears. So George, do you want to, uh, he, he probably needs no introduction with this crowd, but uh, I'll, I'll have him give you a, a little introduction anyways. Yeah, thanks, Kerry. You never know. Some people may not know me, but uh, yeah, thanks. I am George Spears, Citrix Technology Professional since 2019. So this is my fifth year as a CTP. Uh, it's a great honor, obviously, if to be a CTP. I'm a consultant through my consultancy firm, EUC UK. And I just want to thank Kiri, uh, Goliath, and of course, UGC for having me today. Thank you, George. All right, so uh, our agenda today, it, it's, it's uh, like I said, we'll, we'll accelerate to a, account for the delay and start, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about what it is that we're here to, to do, what our, what our purpose is, what our objective is. We'll talk about uh, the current state of ticket resolution and, and where some of the issues are with troubleshooting. Um, We'll, we'll identify some of the more efficient ways and then how we can help you be more efficient and break through some of the uh, some of the bottlenecks that happen with current troubleshooting processes. Then I'll run you through a quick demo of our solution. Of course, anytime you would like a more in-depth demo, uh, we can always schedule that. We have free demos, uh, free POCs, free trials. So we'll talk about that at the end, but uh, we'll do a quick product demo on here as well. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up and spend some time on Q&A. So again, if you have any questions, type them into the Q&A panel, uh, and we'll we'll try to get to those at the end of the session. George, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Kerry, again. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll start with the objective, and the objective is Goliath Technologies really wants to help people resolve tickets quicker. So anyone who has supported Citrix environments, which I guess probably everyone in this webinar today, uh, you'll all agree that often tickets which are logged by the frontline help desk teams they're often fake so they lack the right information and detail at level two or three Citrix support engineers need and this makes it more challenging to get the root cause so the ultimate objective would be to have a solution in place that can proactively anticipate issues before they happen what this means is getting alerted early on so that you can avoid end users logging tickets and telling you that there's a problem because that's never good. So this will cut down on a lot of tickets, but it won't cut down on all of them. And then on the flip side, when tickets do come in, and inevitably they will come in, then it's crucial to be able to quickly identify root cause. And this is often where IT teams struggle for various reasons, like lack of data, and having to rely on multiple disjointed tools that don't show the complete picture. So being able to reduce blind spots and shine a bright light on the likely causes of issues can greatly reduce the load on IT support. And getting the root cause quickly will help IT to permanently fix the issue rather than just band-aid the issues. And then having documentation with objective evidence of root cause means that IT can not only remediate the initial issue, but they can also put in permanent fixes to ensure that the issue doesn't happen again. Now let's take a look at the current state of IT and there's some really interesting stats on this slide to touch on. So for more than 10 years now, Goliath has been working with hundreds of leading organizations worldwide, organizations from enterprise to SMB, and they've been helping their IT departments be more efficient helping them to take a proactive approach to tackling IT issues. And this has really allowed Goliath to gather a lot of information from experts in the field, as well as from their partners, uh, such partnerships such as from with Gartner, uh, for example. So nine times out of 10, what the user reports as the issue is not the actual root cause of the issue. And this really ties back to the fact that end users struggle to articulate what is actually happening 
And to be honest, this, this has got to be somewhat expected because the end users are typically not IT literate. They just want to do their own job and where their virtual desktop is located or what technology maps or printers into their session is really not their concern. Then 40% of time is spent trying to troubleshoot issues by IT teams. And this is a big chunk of time spent not just resolving issues, but searching for the root cause. This impacts on other tasks that the team might want to do, like making improvements to systems or embarking on transformational projects. Resolution can be much more efficient if the root cause identification could be made easier. Then 30% of the time, the root cause actually never gets resolved. So the issue just keeps repeating and repeating itself. And what this means typically is a lot of band-aids are put in place, um, but they do little to actually solve the, the problem. And at face value, that could be 30% ticket volume that could be easily avoided. So IT needs tools to help them with permanent solutions to stop this flow of repeated tickets. And we can probably all relate to this next statistic. So 70% of Citrix reported issues, Citrix is not actually the root cause. So most of the time, if a user is going to, say, log into Workspace app or log into Storefront, and maybe something's not working, they phone up the help desk, they submit a ticket, and they say, hey, Citrix is broken or Citrix is slow. We hear that all, all too often. And then what happens is this blame game starts and fingers start to get pointed in the wrong direction. So, for example, the ticket may be forwarded to the Citrix admin who and the Citrix admin not only has to spend their own valuable time investigating the issue and justifying why it's not a Citrix problem, but then they have to pass the ticket on to other teams. And that ticket just gets cycled and cycled across IT and across the different departments, all whilst the end user is not able to be productive. So they can't do their job. And that ultimately costs the business money. And then 42% of IT issues go unreported. And what this means is there are a lot of users, they're either frustrated or unproductive while they sit and wait for IT issues to be resolved. So these users operate under the assumption that IT is already aware of the issue and they're working on it, or they have given up on reporting the issue because it happens so often. And as I mentioned before, 30% of the time, the root cause is never actually found. So the issue doesn't get resolved permanently. And if the end user has lost confidence in IT to the point where they stop reporting issues, then that's a big problem. However, having the ability to take a proactive approach in IT will help keep workers more productive. And it'll let you know if there are workers, if there are workers suffering in silence with, say, a poor user experience. Plus, it'll help to rebuild that trust between end users and IT. So now I want to talk a little bit about this side, uh, which is the trouble with troubleshooting, because when it comes to troubleshooting, it also has its own set of challenges. So firstly, often there's, as I mentioned before in the previous slide, too much time spent finger pointing. So it's an issue for the network team, or it's an issue with the storage, it's an issue with the hosting environment, the Citrix environment, and so on. The right level is triaging, and the lack of detail surrounding the issue from the beginning is often missing. And this is how the finger pointing starts. So for example, it might sound like a Citrix issue, and that's because the end user thinks it's a problem with Citrix. So when they call up the frontline help desk, the frontline help desk take the user's word for it, and then they log the ticket. So they log a ticket saying Citrix is slow or Citrix is not working. And in many of these larger enterprises, there are dedicated teams for networking, storage, Active Directory, Citrix, et cetera. And all these teams different, they have their own different set of tools and processes, and they don't understand how other parts of the environment are solutioned and designed to work. So the network team, for example, don't necessarily know how Citrix works most of the time. And what this does is it just further increases the likelihood of finger pointing to the point where even external vendors need to be involved. Then there is a lack of visibility into the root cause of performance issues, and this has been an an ongoing plague for IT departments. Add to that peer communication between teams and or other IT vendors in your technology stack. Peer communication between IT teams, management and vendors. You know, understandably, everyone's looking after their own silo. So one may only be concerned with Citrix, another may only be concerned with networking, another with servers and so on. So being able to correlate another team's data with your data 
makes it really difficult to find root cause. For instance, you know, a server may look healthy in paper, but it may be causing some issues with the end user. And without correlating all the data across the IP infrastructure, that connection may be missed and thus the finger pointing continues. And then there are gaps in objective data and analytics to objectively prove root cause. So we all need good objective data because all too often we rely on subjective feedback from end users or fake descriptions about what is wrong. And it's not just about data, it's about correlating all this data and presenting it in a clear, digestible way so it's easy to troubleshoot and get the root cause. Because without all this, you're left to put the pieces of, of the puzzle together yourself. And guess what? That takes a lot of time typically. Then there's a reliance on subjective end user feedback around performance. So IT is still too reliant on surveys or other means of subjective feedback to measure the health of IT organizations and end user experience. This doesn't provide clear objective evidence of health of IT. So in fact, more times than not, IT gets a bad rep because People are only likely to provide feedback when they're frustrated, when something's not working, versus when everything is working as it should do. So the surveys tend to skew less positive than the actual health of, of IT should warrant. And it also boils, boils down to perception versus reality. So who wants to sit in front of the CIO and explain how IT has been on top of things when the subjective feedback may tell a different story? It would be better just to have objective data not only skipping over perception, but also focusing on reality. So all of what I've discussed so far stems from the fact that IT infrastructure is complex. You know, there's no avoiding it, especially with like cloud and hybrid cloud going around now. Your environment and your solutions is pretty much made up of a full array of technologies from many different vendors, all working in concert to deliver a great end user experience, or at least that's the hope. So when an end user submits a ticket to say their app is slow, you know, maybe the app is say Epic Hyperspace, for example, and maybe it's not launching at all. So as I mentioned before, the user doesn't have any concern about how Epic is delivered, whether it be via an on-premises Citrix virtual apps and desktops environment or via Citrix cloud. They don't get visibility into all the layers of technology responsible for delivering the app. All they see is Epic is launched from Citrix Workspace app or Storefront or Workspace, for example. So then it's up the IT to peel back the layers and try to find the issue. But the problem is many of the layers dependent to provide that great end user experience, they're often managed by different teams. So even if you have all the data to prove it's not Citrix, for example, you likely don't have all the tools to correlate it all and present it in a meaningful way that can reduce overall time to find root cause. Instead, you travel back down that road of trying to work across different teams who only really have a, a few into uh, a part of the stack and they don't understand the operational aspects of these other layers. So let's look at a uh, common troubleshooting process. So Goliath through their years, um, working with different IT teams of all sizes, they see a common theme in respect to how organizations troubleshoot. And what quickly becomes apparent is that efficiency isn't part of the process, but it's absolutely not for a lack of trying. It's due to the lack of having the right tools to speed the process, eliminate any unnecessary steps and hone in on the root cause quickly. So the typical process would probably look something like this. Number one, a fake ticket gets logged with the desk and it gets routed to the Citrix support queue. The ticket reads printer is slow or application is slow in Citrix. But what then happens is you need to call the user up just to get more information because we can't work off of printer is slow. It's, just not, it's not really good enough for us to find root cause and understand what the issue is. So right away, when you call that user, you're spending time gathering information before you've even begun to investigate what the, the, is causing the problem. And then because the user doesn't understand how Citrix works, you, you likely come off that call and you still don't have the full picture. So then what you do is you end up remoting into the user's desktop to see what exactly is happening. So they'll maybe reproduce the issue in front of your eyes. And let's, let's say it's looking like an endpoint, uh, end user endpoint issue. So you might start checking the health of that endpoint. So you might use tools like uh, Event Viewer or Task Manager. You might also use other tools to check the health of the application 
poorly helps with your printer itself. Um, you could involve the network team to check the network because often you don't have visibility into the performance and health of the network. Then after some time, you know, networks go off, they do their checks, they come back to you, they say, hey, we can't find anything, everything's working great our side. So then you have to proceed to, let's say, check the virtual machine or the virtual server, and maybe you use VMware vCenter for it to check on any alerts of the, the VM health. You may not have access to vCenter, so you might have to call a VMware team in to assist uh, with helping check that virtualized uh, server. And all of this burns up a lot of valuable time for not only IT, but the end user. And after all of this, you have to try and map out all of these data points and draw some conclusion as to what the what may be the actual issue. You know, so what's the root cause? Because what you're doing is you're looking for a permanent fix to avoid any band-aid that's really going to result in the issue coming back up again, or the issue possibly extending out to other end users. So all in all, it's a really long, tedious process that's just ate up a lot of your time. And by the way, this probably isn't the only ticket you're working on. So, you know, often a, a single IT support engineer will be working on three or more tickets at any one time. So you can quickly see how everything can dangerously multiply. And then, you know, when we get to the demo section that Kiri's going to show coming up, we'll take a look at some of the most common troubleshooting issues. And Kiri's going to show you how you can cut down this process from hours to days or even just to a couple of minutes. So, Kerry, do you want to take it on from here? Yeah, thank you, George. <clears throat> Appreciate it. So, you know, George covered off on the complexity of it. He's not telling you all anything that you don't already know. We're actually taking a different approach. We're providing actual end user experience, but from the end user's perspective, where traditional approaches look more at the independent performance of the of the different IT elements, the IT infrastructure <clears throat> and the applications, and then attempt to infer what's happening from the from the end user's perspective. So we're 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 starting with the end user and we're informing outwardly. So you know when we take this approach to, to troubleshooting, again, we're incorporating what's happening from the end user's perspective into the mix. And then we're correlating that with all of the other things in the IT uh, delivery infrastructure. So uh, we're, we're bringing in user behavior, machine health itself, location of the end user, local connection, corporate network, server, uh, all the different elements of the, of the IT delivery infrastructure are correlated together, again, with the end user behavior metrics as well. As well. And I'll show you in the demo what that looks like. <clears throat> but we're pulling it all into a single view, making it easier to diagnose and see what element is impacting what. So uh, again, I'll show you when we get in there, but we, we draw this dependency map that uh, shows you exactly how IT elements impact other IT elements so that you can actually get ahead of issues because you can see there's an issue maybe with a delivery controller that could potentially at some point impact end users if you don't go in there uh, and, and maybe adjust the resourcing. So <clears throat> we're helping you see all of this in a single view and showing you the dependency across the IT elements. So from the end user standpoint, all these silos, they work together to deliver the technology end to end. In fact, the end user doesn't even know these silos exist. But from IT standpoint, you know these represent different teams as, as George was talking about earlier. So, uh, and each of those teams has a myopic, myopic view into their own environment and there's no correlation. So. You know, on the troubleshooting side, <clears throat> we have to take all these disparate pieces of data and try to try to infer some sort of connection to what's actually happening on the on the end user side. So one one of our customers actually put it this way. I thought this was a, a cool description of of how Goliath works. You know, from their perspective. So imagine uh, you misplaced your car keys in your house. I have done this many of times. Um, probably many of you have as well. And, and you have your whole family looking all over the house to figure out where these car keys are at. The only thing you know is that the car keys are in the house, um, or at least you think that they're in the house. Well, what Goliath does is actually tell you what room the keys are in and where the most likely place in that room is to find those keys. So you could be looking all day long to find these keys. We're pointing you exactly to the room that the keys are in, and we're guiding you to the most likely place in that room where you're gonna find the keys. So we're helping really to do 
uh, you know, we're helping IT really in three ways. We, we start with anticipation. You know, we want to help IT get ahead of issues as much as possible. You know, the, 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 you know, the, the end state would be that tickets don't come in, or at least they're uh, drastically reduced. Of course, they're always going to come in for some reason, but you know, at least the, the easy things to fix. So we're, we're doing things like automated synthetic user logons. We're testing and confirming all aspects of the delivery infrastructure and that they're working properly and that the applications are available. And if they're not available, we're alerting in real time and then documenting the failure points. And I'll show you how that works in, in the, in the uh, technology here in a moment. We've got uh, threshold-based alerts that are out of the box. So we, we've got embedded intelligence and automation that's working together monitoring over 250 key conditions, events, failure points, no manual setup involved, automatically alerting your team if any of the thresholds are breached. These thresholds are also uh, built right into the solution. No configuration. They are customizable, uh, but they're built into the solution based on uh, industry best practices, actually based on Citrix recommendations. Uh, so you have the opportunity to be alerted before end users are even impacted. Uh, <clears throat> We have things like self-healing remediations, supporting self-healing workflows like restarting applications or servers, executing PowerShell scripts and, and more. And, and you know, that's all on um, helping to stay in front of issues. But here's the thing, we know issues are gonna come up, right? They're going to, to pop up. So how are we helping with troubleshooting? Because you know, that's where it really gets where it really gets tricky is you know, we get these vague tickets. And so we're bringing all of this data together, we're correlating it from all the, the different uh, sources across the infrastructure, things like hypervisor, servers, operating systems, applications, again, uh, tying in user behavior with that as well. Uh, and it's allowing you to spend less time actually troubleshooting because we pull all that information in, we correlate it and we interpret it for you and show it to you in a single dashboard. Again, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, but we're providing the most detailed Citrix uh, metrics that are available outside of director and we're correlating this with all the other IT elements. So a lot of you all are familiar with, with leveraging director. Director is a great tool, but director looks at the Citrix environment only. So if, if you've got issues that are impacting the end user that are outside of the Citrix environment, director doesn't help with that. Um, we have an automatic discovery and dependency map. And, and this is something that is cool. I'll show you, I talked about it a minute ago. It's not, it's not just a topology view, but it's actually drawing the dependencies between the different IT elements across the infrastructure. So you can see you know, in real time what's happening across your infrastructure, you can actually get ahead of things. Uh, but if it is because of a ticket that came in, you can go there, it's like a heat map, uh, and it'll show you exactly where the issues are at and you can drill down and, and uh, go in and do your troubleshooting by knowing exactly where to look and you know, equally as important where not to look. Um, <clears throat> we do, uh, uh, we have purpose-built EHR modules. So uh, we're the only monitoring and troubleshooting software with purpose-built modules that integrate metrics for EHR performance, end user experience, and the underlying Citrix and VMware Horizon uh, virtualization delivery. I know that this group doesn't handle the VMware side, but you know we're, we're pulling all elements of the VDI infrastructure. And we have an industry-only partnership with, uh, with um, Cerner where we're actually able to deploy our agents uh, on the ZenApp server inside Cerner's RHO. And nobody else can do that. We have an Epic module as well, pulling in telemetry from uh, Epic System Pulse. We have a Meditech module. So if you're in the health, healthcare space, we're pulling in you know, not only the, the telemetry that we've been talking about already, but we're also pulling in telemetry from the EHR modules as well. And then and perhaps you know, most importantly, we're providing documentation. So we're showing you, you know, where the root cause is at, we're documenting what the issue is so that you can go in and permanently fix it. And then we're providing objective evidence uh, via screenshots, via reporting that helps you show the actual fix has been completed. And it shows you exactly what's happening from an end user's perspective as well. So you can report back on what's happening. So we're helping IT to go from a react, you know, take take a reactive approach to be proactive. All right, so we're gonna kind of skip through this example a little bit because I'll show you in uh, the product how how we're doing some of these things. But um, <clears throat> again, just for sake of time. So I'm gonna move through 
uh, quickly through this one. So this was an example where we had a physician in a rural uh, Intermountain Clinic in Utah. So the physician was complaining, uh, complaining about issues. EHR wasn't, uh, wasn't working. So taking 20 minutes to load, if it loaded at all. <clears throat> After analyzing the physician's data using Goliath, Intermountain noticed that her connection wasn't native to the clinic. And so it was coming from a different location and actually ended up being her house. And uh, she was doing the majority of her charting work after work. So she wasn't doing that at the hospital. She was doing that at her house. And it ended up being an infrastructure issue at her home uh, that required her internet service provider to come in and do some upgrades. So these are things that uh, wouldn't necessarily be uh, able to be solved as quickly as it was with Intermountain. And, and oftentimes, too, when you're when you're looking from a healthcare perspective, you know, if you've got an issue with uh, uh, with your EHR, these issues are probably going to be escalated to the EHR team. And, you know, they're going to sit in their queue for a while, too, only to find out they're going to come back and say, well, it's not an issue on our side. Everything looks good, kicks it back to your IT team. And now you're back to trying to figure out what's going on. So Goliath being able to pull all of this telemetry in together and correlate it together helps to reduce that and eliminate that as being a part of the process. All right, I won't show you the steps because, again, I'm going to show you this in demo. But the idea here is you don't have to be an expert to identify root cause. We're doing the heavy lifting for you. Uh, and I know that Citrix expertise is, is in short supply uh, at a lot of organizations. So you guys are taxed, right? You, you're, you're carrying a load that, you know, ideally, you know, you would have 20 or 30% more Citrix specific resources in place to be able to handle. So, you know, helping you all to be more efficient and when managing uh, and troubleshooting your, your end users, particularly around your Citrix environment, becomes even more important. So we know that IT has been in a state of transition uh, and they're moving more from you know, the previous sort of specialist model to more of a generalist model, which means uh, less expertise about uh, uh, the different elements across the delivery infrastructure and it leaves some gaps there. Um, <clears throat> because we do the data correlation, because we're interpreting it, interpreting it for IT, you know, you can go in quickly, find root cause, and, and without a, a deep level of expertise, you know, that maybe was once needed for the complex issues, particularly within the, the Citrix environment. So again, we're using embedded intelligence and automation and industry best practices to help take a proactive approach so that you know when and where to start looking uh, before issues impact your end users. And these are just a sample of some of the triggers uh, that can cause alerting within Goliath that you can go in and, and proactively uh, proactively tackle. All right, so we're coming short on time. I want to go ahead and jump right into the demo. All right, so again, the goal of our technology is to help you anticipate issues before they happen. Uh, we want to help you troubleshoot them quickly when they do and then provide you the right reports and analytics to document the root cause uh, so that permanent issues can be resolved or so that performance issues uh, can be resolved. <clears throat> we accomplish this again, embedded intelligence, automation, automatically discovering your environment. When, when you deploy Goliath, it's automatically pulling in telemetry from your entire environment uh, and <clears throat> pulling it all into this single dashboard. So let's take a look at what we're, what we're talking about. So when we, when we talk about getting ahead of issues, anticipation, um, you know, seeing events before they happen, this is an example of, of one of the aspects of our technology that there was a, a, a large healthcare system they had 100 plus hospitals, uh, 25,000 users. They have, uh, you know, one of the largest EHRs. Uh, I think they were using Epic in this case, <clears throat> and they they were caught in a in a situation where they were they were in a quarterly update window, and they updated the solution overnight. The Citrix team uh, published the application, or they thought they did, uh, and then everything you know was supposed to be fine. Well. The IT team got alerted at about four o'clock in the morning that there was an issue with their application. Epic wasn't launching. Now this was across their entire organization. So we're talking 25,000 individuals that did not have access to their Epic, um, 
their Epic EHR. So they were alerted. They were able to come in. They were able to figure out what happened. Uh, and so they looked, they used our tool, uh, our, our application availability monitor. And you can see here, like in this, in, in this instance, it's testing applications 24 seven. So it's a, it's a synthetic end user log on and it's logging onto the applications exactly as an end user would. And it's capturing telemetry all along the way from the moment that the end user uh, would, would <clears throat> click on the storefront or the workspace app to open it up capturing all the details and screenshots along the way to where they're authenticating uh, to when the application opens up and they have to select uh, the particular published app that they're wanting to access and then the successful launch of this. In, in, in this example, it's Confluence. Um, and they're again, capturing screenshots along the way, but from, um, from this healthcare providers, this uh, health system, uh, they were having an issue where Epic didn't open. Uh, and then so they would come in and they would see, oh, well, we've got an issue here. Uh, we're seeing red application failed to load or failed to launch. And they've got all of the details of exactly what happened uh, within that application failure to launch, including screenshots, as it would be seen from the end user's perspective. Again, 25,000 users were impacted. Now, because they were alerted at four o'clock in the morning, there weren't 25,000 people online trying to access Epic at that time. So by the time you know the day really started rolling, they had already had a fix in place. They had very few tickets coming in. The tickets that did come in, you know, they were already working on the issue. So this was an early warning sign for them to be able to stay ahead of it. Another way uh, that customers use our technology, <clears throat> and I talked a little bit about the topology view. So again, the moment you're deploying Goliath into your environment, it's automatically pulling in all of the telemetry from your all of your disparate IT elements, and it's correlating them. It's it's drawing a dependency map. So it's not again not just a topology view where it lists everything out, but it actually shows you the dependencies on how each uh, element of the IT infrastructure impacts other elements. So you can come here and you say, okay, I'm I'm in my heat map right now, and we have uh, a, a, a college that leverages the Saint Dominic's. St. Dominic's Priory College. And they leverage this heat map daily to go in and see what's happening. So that we see red, there's an issue with this delivery controller. So we come over here, we say, well, CPU looks okay. Oh, but the memory is running hot. So we need to go ahead and update our resources here for this delivery controller. Now you can see here, it's not yet impacting these other IT elements, but they were able, they're able to now go in and adjust the resources on this delivery controller so that it doesn't, in fact, impact these other IT elements. But then you can click in. If there were uh, other issues, you can click down and dive deeper. This is three layers deep. So you know we can look at the infrastructure level. Uh, we can look down to the delivery level all the way down to the machine level. Again, clicking down on each one and uh, digging deeper into whatever the issues might be. But again, this heat map is another way to go in and be proactive and stay ahead of issues before they happen. And then when it comes to troubleshooting, <clears throat> things like uh, slow logons, uh, session slowness, you know, we, we have uh, <clears throat> dashboards in place to help you get to the bottom of issues there. So we're pulling in all of this telemetry. So you've got username, uh, session, uh, the state of the, the session, client, we can see uh, here we can sort by all of these columns as well. So we can pull in uh, Chrome OS as well. We can sort by uh, log on uh, or ICA latency. So if we've got an issue, you know, say they've, you know, we've got a user that comes in and says, I'm, I'm having a slow log on issue. You can sort by the user's name. You can come in and see uh, the session in question. And by the way, this is capturing historical data. So uh, it, if it's an aged ticket that you're just now getting around to being able to troubleshoot, you've got the historical data to go in and, and figure out what's going on. In addition, you can compare sessions, uh, <clears throat> historical sessions against what's hap happening actively. Again, if you have to go you know, more layers deep to figure out what's happening. So you click on that user session. Now we have all of the telemetry from that session from start to finish. So you're pulling in thing like, uh, things like the client machine, how they're connected, uh, the client address, um, <clears throat> the version, the hypervisor host, delivery controller, active directory, all of this is being pulled in. Now this ticket came in, it said I was having a problem with my, with my logon. So I can see right here, we're seeing red. There's definitely an issue with the logon. So we can come in here to the logon tab and we can see the entire 
uh, <clears throat> the entire breakdown of the logon process. I think there's 33 stages of the logon process, brokering, client validation, server validation, authentication, to break that down, there's uh, various stages underneath authentication, any group policy that you have listed uh, within your organization, that's going to show up here, and we're timing all of that. Profile, interactive session, and we're catching, uh, capturing additional metrics around session startup and and uh, for the device itself, workspace startup. So we come into this to this um, to this view, and we can see, okay, we're having an issue on the server validation side. Well, if we need a little bit of help to figure out what that means, we can go over here to log on troubleshooting tips and it'll take you to a knowledge base article that'll tell you exactly what's happening within each of the stages. If you scroll down a little bit further, it actually give you tips on how to troubleshoot what's happening uh, with that particular stage. So we've got this all broken down. You can clearly see where the issue is at. We're pointing you exactly to where to look. So it makes it very easy for you to go in and troubleshoot uh, what's happening with the logon. Now that was two clicks to get you to this. That was it, two clicks to tell you exactly uh, what was happening with your logon. Again, on our summary though, we can see the entire session. So we're pulling in things like uh, ICA round trip time, network latency, connection, CPU, memory, all correlating to this, this together. So, you know, what if this user was complaining about a slow session, okay? We could just go one more tab over we can see here, okay, I can see there was a spike in round trip time. There was also a drop or a, a, a continuous climb in network latency, and we see a drop in connection. I, I suspect probably we've got a connection speed issue, but let's drive deep, dive deeper into that. And we click on the ICA tab, and we can see all of these uh, metrics split out. So here we can see round trip time, and we can see, oh, well, we started to see a spike here uh, around... 1433. Now we have our, our pre-built pre -built thresholds. So we can see, all right, well, it's not really approaching caution yet, but it's getting close. But then over there uh, at the end of the session, it definitely spiked that past caution into critical. So we, we definitely have an issue somewhere. So the issue started around 1433. We can go over to our connection speed and see, oh, all right, well, I see a pretty significant drop here. What happened? Oh, right there at 1433, same exact time, I saw a drop in connection speed and a uh, 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 spike in the round trip time. So you can see all of this <clears throat> broken down. You can also pull in user behavior. So when we look at IC channel usage, this is what the user is actually doing in that session at that time. So we can see here that when we see a spike in round trip time, we also see a spike in, in uh, user behavior. So we can drill into this and see, well, what's happening here in this set? I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. We're pulling in things like, uh, are they streaming audio? Uh, are they streaming graphics? So we pull in thin wire. So that represents you know, graphics you know, in, in intensive applications. So in this case, we're seeing audio and graphics. Probably this user is you know, streaming uh, Netflix or watching a YouTube video. So in addition to the fact that they had a network uh, speed drop, uh, you know, the, uh, a drop in connection, they also were, were doing, you know, something on their end that was uh, taking up extra bandwidth. And so they were negatively impacting their own session even though they had a, a drop in connection speed, they still had a connection uh, and, and ICA performance uh, was able to maintain you know a pretty good uh, a pretty good experience until the end but they were also doing something that was impacting that so we're pulling in those user behavior uh, analytics as well so <clears throat> other things that uh, are important to pull out so if you've got an environment where um, let me change my search here where maybe you you've got Chrome OS devices, See. Chrome OS devices deploy. We're the only vendor that can pull in Chrome OS device health and performance metrics into monitoring and troubleshooting dashboard. Uh, we have a unique relationship with Google. They've granted us access to their APIs. We're the only vendor who can correlate that. So you can come in here. We see we've got uh, um, a Chrome OS device launching. We still have the same dashboard here, but we add an additional tab 
for Chrome OS. So we're pulling in things like CPU. We can see in this, okay, the CPU is it's uh, running a little hot. It's still uh, within acceptable limits, but it's caution. Uh, but memory is definitely running hot. We're, we're, we're past a critical threshold. We have uh, local network strength as well. So we're pulling in Chrome OS device metrics into the overall dashboard and all of it's being correlated here. So everything that you need from a telemetry standpoint to go in and troubleshoot user issues is all right here in this dashboard. Within a few clicks, you're getting to, to, um, to root cause. Then, you know, it, we have other, uh, other tabs as well. So you can go in and see uh, things like app server, uh, hypervisor host, processes, uh, in our 12.1 release that is coming out very, very soon, uh, you're going to see an in process here. We're going to we're going to add things uh, that that frontline support is going to be able to do on demand remediation, remediation, like ending processes, ending applications, logging off user sessions. They're going to be built right into the Goliath console. So a lot of these tickets that might get uh, escalated to the Citrix admin can be handled at the help desk level, reducing the overall amount of tickets that uh, that come in. So again, things like logging off user, log off session, ending process, uh, ending the application, uh, that's gonna all be added in the next release that's coming out very, very soon. And then we have lots of reporting options as well. And uh, I'll show you specifically our end user, um, our end user experience scorecard. And this is, by the way, going to be moving into the product uh, with our next release as well. So if you're familiar with Goliath, uh, it's not in the product today, um, <clears throat> but it will be in the product um, here very, very shortly. So we're providing an industry-only scorecard with an actual uh, objective view of what the end user experience is having. Uh, and again, this is based on industry best practices. So an overall end user experience score, you're going to be able to sort this by site, by location, by team, uh, by subgroup. So if you want to see what's happening at a site uh, in Chicago with the finance team, what's, what's their end user experience look like? You're going to be able to pull a scorecard up and send this report uh, up to leadership so that they can see exactly what's happening uh, with that team at that particular site. Again, objectively telling the unbiased truth of what exactly is happening across the end user experience. We also have another variation uh, of this as well, log on, uh, log on duration scorecard. A lot of organization, organizations have, you know, like 30, 10 SLAs, 30 second connects, 10 second reconnects, and they're using log on duration scorecards to measure their performance, to see how they're, they're scoring and, uh, against their SLA, against their KPIs. And again, this is an objective depiction of what's happening. Uh, the other interesting thing to note uh, on the end user experience scorecard is this is a way to, to uh, measure your end user experience against uh, industry best practices. So you're seeing how you're comparing against uh, <clears throat> what other organizations in the industry are experiencing. These scorecards, they really solve three challenges. Uh, right now, there's no objective way to represent how well IT is doing. You know, we're, we're relegated to subjective feedback, surveys, whatnot, that don't tell an accurate uh, picture. IT lacks the necessary data to improve the actual end user experience. This solves that. And um, when problems do occur, they're amplified. So oftentimes we, we hear loud problems that our leadership might think, or even we might think are widespread, but they're not really widespread. They're just loud uh, and isolated and scorecards will help tell that story as well. All right, so we're coming short on time. Uh, quickly, I just want to let you know that we've got a 30-day free trial, 30-day uh, free access to our scorecards. Uh, so we have a, a, a free demo as well, POC, fully supported. And when we say fully supported, we mean it. You get instant access to our support team and our knowledge base so that you can get the most out of it. Um, you'll get things like uh, uh, Citrix application availability testing, unique metrics for log on duration, uh, all you got to do is reach out to techinfo at goliathtechnologies.com or goliathtechnologies.com, or you can email me or you can message me on LinkedIn, uh, however you want to, but we can get you set up with a free trial, uh, a demo, a POC, whatever it is that you might be 
looking for. So again, uh, reach out to techinfo at goliathtechnologies.com or you can go right to our website, goliathtechnologies.com. All right, I wanna make sure we take some time to get to some Q&A. So let me go ahead and pull that up. Yeah, I see there's right. six questions here so far. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. Can we drill down further into each of the logon phases? Yes, we can. Uh, and we showed that uh, over 30 stages that we're, that we're capturing. You can go in and uh, see our detailed logon drill down. All right, let's see. Regarding the synthetic logon feature, can it record a real user's actions and then use that information to repeatedly test the published application? So it is a synthetic logon. It is going through and logging on uh, into the application exactly as the end user would, and it's recording all of those steps and capturing that. Um, <clears throat> but it's not recording the real user, any real user's actions. It's, it's a synthetic logon. But it is logging on and going through every single step exactly as an end user, uh, as a real user would, and capturing that and testing the availability of that application. Does licensing include both Zen Desktop and Zen App? Yes, it does. Thin clients, do you support WISE or other thin client devices? Yes, we do support thin client devices. All right, I know that Citrix has different licensing options for virtual apps and desktops. Is any part of this limited to the type of Citrix licensing that you have? No, it is not. This is pulling in as long as we're able to, as long as you have the, the Citrix licensing, we're able to pull that telemetry into, into Goliath Performance Monitor. All right. <clears throat> Does this solution work with AWS? Uh, I would need a little bit more detail as to what specifically you would be looking for there, Gabriel. So uh, happy to take that offline because I know we're running out of time, but uh, I'm happy to take that offline to get some more details about what you're asking. 